Hi, I'm Rob, N1NUG. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this ATU100HF ham radio antenna tuner that Guzizu sent me to review and share with you. When you purchase one of these tuners from Guzizu, you will get the tuner itself and you'll get a power lead with a barrel connector on one end and flying leads on the other. So you're going to have to add your own connectors on this side to mate up to whatever power supply or battery that you're going to use. Looking at the tuner, you can see we have a display over here. This is the tune button, and this is the power switch. That's all we have for controls on the front panel. Now, speaking of the front panel and the rear panel, both of them are made from printed circuit board material. Now, that's not a huge feature for most people, but for me, I've been in the printed circuit board manufacturing industry my whole career, so I always enjoy seeing creative uses of circuit boards. And of course, we have that here. With that being said, if I spin this around, you can see there's not much to talk about on the top or bottom or sides, other than some rubber feet on the bottom. But if we take a look at the back of the unit, we can see we've got two SO239 jacks, one for the transmitter and one for the antenna. And then over here, we've got two wire terminals that can accept bare wire or banana plugs. And these would be used for connecting up a long wire antenna. The antenna itself would go to the red one and the black one would go to ground. And then of course, over here, we've got the power socket that mates up with the supplied barrel connector for the power lead. I ended up getting some Anderson power poles on the power wire and I've got the tuner plugged into my 12 volt power supply back there on the bench. I've also got my Yaesu FT891 here. We're gonna use this to do some testing. I've got the tuner connected up between my Yaesu FT891 and my fan dipole that's out in the backyard. Now, the first thing I wanna show you is that when the tuner is completely off, it's in sort of bypass mode. That means if you don't need the tuner, if your antenna is already cut for the band you're working on, like mine is, on 40 meters, you can leave the tuner off and it'll just kind of transmit through and not cause a problem. Now, of course, there probably is some insertion loss with this setup. I don't know what that is. It doesn't seem like it's very much, but I encourage you to look at the specs and see if you can find that information on your own. Now, I don't recommend that you have the tuner in line if you don't need it because of insertion losses and that kind of a thing. But if for some reason you've gotta leave it in line and you don't need it, you can transmit through that. In fact, I'll show you. I've got the radio currently tuned to 40 meters. We're in AM mode, so we'll be able to throw just a plain carrier and the radio is putting out about 10 watts. We're currently receiving, you can see I've got an S9 signal, and that's because of some noisy LED lights out in the yard that I need to turn off. But nevertheless, if I key up the radio and transmit in AM mode, we will throw about a 10 watt carrier, bypass the tuner, and go right to the antenna. And you'll see here from the SWR meter, which is currently active, that the SWR is quite good on this antenna with the tuner off. Okay, and there you go. You can see the SWR is just registering about 1.1 while we're transmitting, and again, it's about 10 watt carrier. So now if I tune down to the CW portion of the 40 meter band and key up, still in AM mode, so we're throwing a carrier, you're going to see that the SWR is a little bit higher. So in this case, it's approaching two to one, at least according to the radio's meter. So at this point, I'll turn on the tuner and we'll go through the exercise of matching the antenna at this frequency. So to turn it on, I just push the button, wait a few seconds, and of course it boots up and we're ready to go. So now if I key up the radio, the tuner should do its thing and match the antenna to the transmitter. And while it's doing it, We'll hear a few clicks and whirs and things like that, like you'd normally expect from a tuner. And we'll also see the information on the screen down here change. So let's try it out and see how it goes. So in this case, the antenna was fairly closely matched. The tuner didn't have to do much. You probably heard just a very quick kind of grinding noise, and that was it. Now we've got a 1.0 or 1.1 match. And you can see we're reading 14 watts into the tuner and about 13 or 14 out for an efficiency of 94%. Now, if for whatever reason, I want the tuner to kind of retune on this band to see if I can maybe get a better match, I can push the silver button 
and you can see it says SWR tune now. So now if I key up, you can see it did just a kind of brief little tune, and now it's actually slightly better than it was before. We're looking at an, still an efficiency of 94%, but we've got 14 or 15 watts into the tuner and steady 14 out with an SWR of 1.01 or 5 or whatever it was that it's bouncing around between. Okay, so now if I want to reset the tune, I can push the button twice. And you probably saw it briefly say reset. So now if I key up again, it should retune again. Okay, and again, it retuned. We're down to about 1.05. You may have seen the SWR meter on the radio jump up quickly, but we're kind of back to a perfect match now. So this time I've switched over to the bottom portion of 80 meters, still in AM so we can get a carrier. I'm just gonna key up and go for it, and let's see what the tuner does. Okay, so that just took a few seconds. You heard it kind of grind and whir. Now we've got an SWR of 1.01 or so. And again, 13 to 14 watts into the tuner and 13 out. And right now we're getting an efficiency of about 89%. Now when I unkey, you'll see some information here on the screen. Obviously no power is going out. So we've got an SWR of zero, but you can see we've got a measured capacitance of 1000 picofarad and a measured inductance of 3.20 microhenries. So now I've switched over to 17 meters. My antenna doesn't have any legs cut for this band, so tuning this is gonna be a little bit more of a challenge for the tuner. Let's see if it can do it. Again, AM mode and putting out about 10 watts. And no problem, took just a couple of seconds and we've got a good tune on 17 meters. Now if we go by the specs that are printed on the front panel, this tuner should only work between 1.8 megahertz and 30 megahertz. But I'm gonna push my luck, and I'm gonna try it on six meters just to see if it works. Once again, I'm on AM and putting out 10 watts, so let's key up and see if we can get a match on six meters. Okay, that took a little bit longer, but you can see we do have a match. SWR is 1.01, .01, power out 14 watts, power at the antenna 13, and an efficiency of 91%. However, if you look at the radio, you can see the radio is now seeing an SWR of two. So it's not really working quite right. I'm not sure which meter to believe, the radio or the tuner. So I'm not sure I would trust this on six meters, but it might work in a pinch, so keep that in mind if you're considering buying one of these. One of the antennas that I have out in my yard is a Mako V58CB radio antenna, and I found that that works really well on 20 and 15 meters, but I of course need a tuner in order to match that antenna to my radios. So I've switched over to the Mako, and let's key up the radio and see if it'll tune it. Now again, we're running 10 watts, and I'm on 20 meters right now. Okay, it took a few seconds, and we've got a reading of 1.14, and according to the radio, the meter looks good on there too. So I think we've got a good match. This should work. Now let's try 15 meters and see if it tunes it there. Okay, once again, just took a few seconds. Looks good on the radio, and we look good over here on the tuner as well. If you've followed me for any length of time, you probably already know that I am a manual tuner fan. You can obviously see a few of them here kind of behind me, and there's a few more behind you <laughs> that you can't see. I just enjoy kind of the process of using a manual tuner. It's kind of like driving a stick shift car. I feel like I'm more in control. The problem though is that nowadays with MFJ out of business, it's really hard to find an affordable manual tuner. You could check the used market, but people are asking way too much money most of the time. You might get lucky at a ham fest if, if you really want a manual tuner. So if you need a tuner for your station or your portable operations, then the ATU100 from Guzizu may be one that you want to consider. As we saw in the video, it seems to work pretty well, even with a high mismatch. It's pretty small, it's lightweight, and 
it only needs about half an amp of 12 volts to run. So you could power this from your LifePo battery if you're out on a portable activation and not worry about draining too much power, or you can run it in the shack, probably even on a wall wart if you wanted to wire one of those up for it. So again, if you wanna learn more about this and are considering purchasing one, please check the affiliate link down in the video description below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. 7-3, and thanks for watching.